Live from the IRC Television Studios on the SUNY Oneonta campus, this is Oneonta News Now. I'm Joanna Weidenhammer. And I'm Barbara Prempe. Before we start the news, meteorologist Connor Chapman joins us with a look at the Oneonta weather cam. Thanks, Johanna. Beautiful day today, wonderful fall weather. Uh, a little bit cooler than yesterday. We have a pattern change coming in the future. After the break, back to you. Thanks, Connor. Coming up next, we have your campus news. Stay tuned to Oneonta News Now. Us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the, the other, other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us, all of us, to, to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. In campus news, a uh, collaborative autobiography written by 29 SUNY Oneonta students and recent alumni have won two awards at the Latino Literacy uh, Now's International Latino Book Awards. The translated title of the novel is My Life in the United States. Young Hispanic heritage language speakers write about their experiences. The work highlights the students' experiences of growing up with dual language and cultures as well as the various authors' struggles. The students' writing was produced as part of professional uh, professor Maria Cristina Montoya's Spanish for Bilinguals. This course was created from native Spanish speakers here at SUNY Oneonta. Professor Montoya and three students were able to attend the awards ceremony held at California State University in Los Angeles. On November 2nd, don't miss out one, on one of SUNY Oneonta's most popular events on campus, Making Sense of Life After College. This interactive event gives the students a glimpse into their finances after college based on an, their anticipated career and location. After completing the evaluation, you will be provided individualized information to help make well-informed financial decisions after graduation. The first 300 students to pre-register will receive a gift as part of your welcome package. Register for your spot today. Lead credit will also be available. Kevin Zambrz Zambrzyski has been named the 2016 SUNY Oneonta Intern of the Year. This new award is sponsored by the Otsego County Chamber to, rec uh, to recognize the work of interns at local businesses and organizations. Two students were honored at, con at a conference on September 2nd, one from Oneonta, Kevin, and one student from Hartwick College. Zambrzyski is a business economics major at SUNY Oneonta and was nominated for this award by the New York NYS Small Business Development Center. He worked for the SBDC last year. Michelle Caton, the senior business manager, stated, quote, The SBDC has been very fortunate to have Kevin Zambrzyski as an intern from SUNY Oneonta over the past school year, unquote. He worked on many projects that has helped the community and receiving the award made him feel that his work has positively impacted the community. Thanks, Joanna. And when we come back, field reporter Samantha Johnson will give us an inside look into SUNY Oneonta's television station, as well as your local entertainment news. Stay with us. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. And we're back with field reporter Samantha Johnson. Thanks, Joanna. SUNY Oneonta's student-run television station, Wire TV, held its annual premiere night on Thursday right here in the IRC television studios. At the event, each of the Wire's six student-produced and directed television shows were aired for the first time this semester. Members gathered around to support their peers and enjoy each other's hard work. I was able to speak with the members of this club. Here's a closer look into what the Wire TV is all about. The Wire TV is SUNY Oneonta's very own student-run television station. This club offers hands-on experience working in a real-life television studio. Whether it is in the control room, behind the scenes, or on camera, students gain knowledge in all aspects of television production. No other club does this, and I know of, that actually you're more hands-on. With 12 crew members needed for each episode to be filmed, students have the opportunity to learn a variety of positions. 
I was able to learn how to do different positions and ultimately moved up to be a floor manager and then I did camera and now I'm a producer. I just worked my way into the control room, uh, started as a master control, the server operator, and then I just kept pushing along and now I'm running the show. The Wire holds its general body meetings every other Thursday at 6 p.m., while each show films every week. There are six shows, all produced and directed by SUNY Oneonta students. Students agree The Wire offers a fun experience, but how it prepares them for the future is what matters to them the most. This summer I was able to intern for Bobby Flay's production company, and just by being in this club, I really hadn't had any other production experience besides for being in Wire, which was really great, and they really valued all the experience that I had had. I learned so much already in the month. I know how to do camera, how to pan, how to zoom, how to do I never knew that stuff before. The Wire films its shows weekly right here in the IRC television studios. For MassCom 256, I'm Samantha Johnson. Everyone knows the comedic genius Dave Coulier, otherwise known as Uncle Joey. SUNY Oneonta was fortunate enough to have Coulier perform during Parents Weekend and do his very own stand-up show. First, he talked about his life on Full House and about the new series Fuller House. During his stand-up, the crowd was hysterical with the number of impressions Coulier was able to do. We can't forget to mention his classic jam out on his harmonica to, the, to end his show. After his stand-up, he finished with a few interviews conducted by SUNY Oneonta organizations. In other news, Kate McMichael of New Student Services recently held a program called Sea of Words. This event was open to all students and its goal was to learn about the power of words and how there are ways to use certain words without being offensive. Students were able to express certain words that hurt them to emphasize the power even one word can have on a person. McMichael said, language is like putting toothpaste back in a bottle, meaning words are powerful and cannot be taken back once they are said. The program left students speechless, but also made them aware. Don't you think that's a great event yeah. for oh, yeah. raising awareness? Yeah. Of, like, My suite made attendance said it was a very, really? very powerful oh, event. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Never know like what words can actually, actually hurt, hurt people. Yeah. So Definitely. I thought it was a good idea. Coming up, we have your local news. Stay tuned to ONN. Don't give up on birth control either. There are more methods than you think. Find yours at bedsider.org. According to Cooperstown Chief of Police Mike Covert, three people have died due to heroin overdoses in the towns of Richfield, Springs, Skinnebus, and West Oneonta. It has been discovered that the fatal drug was laced with fentanyl which is a deadly artificial supplement. This mix is especially dangerous since the um, resulting overdose does not respond to Narcan, a medicine that blocks the effects of opi opiates and uh, reverses overdoses. Officers throughout the country are working towards determining where the deadly combination is coming from in order to stop the distribution of this fatal drug. A blaze that began at a wall in, the, in an Oneonta residence early Thursday morning, October 13th, was stopped short before becoming a conflagration. Residents awoke to an odd smelling smoke at 5.14 a.m. The fire was located at 532 State Highway 28 in the town of Oneonta at the foot of Franklin Mountain. Before the fire crew arrived to the scene, residents were out of the building trying to put out the fire. According to Fire Chief James Maloney, the residents had no smoke detectors. The resident was built in 1920 and is owned by community in Oneonta, 81 Chestnut Street. The exact cause of the fire remains under investigation, but has not been considered suspicious. Oneonta Center for Continuing Adult Learning has received a state grant of $20,000 this past weekend to expand its programs. The money will be used by the center to provide scholarships to individuals who seek to continue their education but are unable to pay the membership fee. According to State Senator James Seward of Milford, a portion of the money will also go towards purchasing new office equipment and expanding programs to include new classes on a variety of subjects including music, art, and travel according to the Daily Star and Alice Kaminstra. President of the CCAL's Board of Directors. The Cottage Day Spa in Oneonta is officially under new ownership. 
The new owners, Kim and Greg McCrony, are no strangers to the cottage. With Kim having worked in the spot for the past 12 years, the cottage is located at 93 Chestnut Street and has been a staple of downtown Oneonta for the past 35 years. Some of the services provided by the spa include hair, nail care, and skin care. A grand opening on November 4th will celebrate the new ownership of the establishment. Um, Dane Schneider has been sentenced to 7 to 24 years in prison after pleading guilty to aggravated vehicular homicide and aggravated DWI. Schneider killed an Auburn teen in July while driving drunk and speeding on State Route 38A in Owasco. Uh, Chloe Calhoun, the 18-year-old teen killed in the crash, was a recent graduate of Auburn High School and planned to attend Utica College to play softball. Police reported that Calhoun was driving an SUV when Schneider's truck collided with Calhoun. Schneider was driving more than 90 miles per hour and had a blood alcohol level of nearly three times the legal uh, limit. The young teen will be remembered by friends and family for her winning personality and de dedication to the game she loved, softball. According to Superintendent Mary Margaret Zare of the Oneida School District, a bullet was found in the hallway of an Oneida Middle School on Thursday. The bullet was found in Odo Shortos Middle School by a staff member. The Madison County Sheriff's Department as well as the New York State Police conducted a search of the entire school after the bullet was discovered. No other evidence was undercovered and the school was ultimately deemed safe for students and staff members. Thankfully, there were no students in the school at the time the bullet was discovered. Baldwinsville police are asking for help to identify two suspects in a larceny investigation. The suspects co um, concealed merchandise inside a Kinney Drugs and left the store without paying. Police identify the suspects as a white man and woman in their 20s. The female suspect is described as skinny with brown hair and wearing a blue and white polka dot shirt with a white sweater and jeans. The male suspect was seen carrying a small child in the surveillance photo. He was wearing a red and blue zip-up sweatshirt and blue jeans and has brown hair with brown facial hair. Both suspects were seen leaving the area in a tan four-door sedan. Anyone with information is asked to contact Baldwinsville Police. Don't it's just so it's sad still, that yeah. the um, crime scene also showed that there was an um, image of a child oh. too, so I hopefully the child is safe. Yeah, yeah. It's sad. When we come back, Connor Chapman will take a look at your five-day weather forecast. Stay with us. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Welcome back to Oneonta News Now. Let's find out what the weather has in store for us this week with our meteorologist, Connor Chapman. Yeah, gorgeous fall day today. A uh, little bit cooler than it was yesterday, but still considering the fact that we broke a record here in Oneonta yesterday, very, very warm for this time of the year. Take a look outside. A couple fair weather clouds, besides that, uh, pretty clear skies with the sun setting pretty soon. But sitting at about 62 degrees, that, considering it's evening time and it's well warmer than our average high, can tell we're in a very warm pattern. Um, but that's not going to last long. Uh, tonight we're going to drop down to about 45 degrees. We're going to have some clouds increasing. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see a, a scattered sprinkle here and there before morning time. But more or less just uh, rolling in clouds through the remainder of the night. Looking at towards tomorrow, uh, we will have a frontal passage coming through. So by mid-morning hours, expect the rain to pick up, um, and it should remain steady throughout the day. Heavy at times, especially as we go to the early to mid-afternoon hours. We're sitting at around 61 degrees, still a little bit warm for this time of the year, uh, but definitely a, a pattern change compared to the warm weather we're used to. Taking a look statewide, um, mostly upper 50s, lower 60s across the board. Buffalo, 59. Some of the hill towns up by uh, Saranac Lake Adirondacks probably aren't going to make it out of the 50s, mid to upper 50s. Um, heading down state areas like the lower and mid Hudson Valley, heading down towards New York City and Long Island, could have an isolated 70, but more or less mid to upper 60s. Still, considering it's, uh, we're a couple weeks away from November, very, very warm for this time of the year. Tomorrow night, um, 
some more periods of heavy rain. It's going to be staying around for a while. This is a very strong front. Still, 54 degrees. I'm just reiterating how warm it is this time of the year. That's our average high for this time. Um, but those clouds and the rain is going to be trapping that heat in. So we won't be cooling down that much. Great sleeping weather. Great to open up the window, hear the rain fall, and have that cool breeze in. But you'll notice as we look ahead towards five days, there is a definite pattern change coming in. Um, on Friday, Still around 60, but going towards Saturday, 46 degrees. Sunday, a little bit warmer with 50, but although we're losing the front and we're going to get back to some nice, beautiful fall weather, 50, 48, and that pattern looks here to stay until next spring. That's all for me. Let's check out with Matthew Miles outside the IRC to get a real feel forecast for this evening. Well, uh, I wish it felt as warm as you say. After being out here for a duration of time, I can tell you it's not that warm. Um, as you can tell, there's the change in the leaves are about peak season now, so expect a lot of leaf uh, to fall down. And uh, as we said, it's going to be cold tonight. Get some good sleep and uh, stay warm, Oneonta, because it's not going to get much warmer as we progress through the year. Thanks. This is Matthew Miles. Back to you. Thanks, Matthew. In a newly released video from 2005, captures Republican candidate Donald Trump making offensive comments. For some, this is the root of sexual violence towards women. Trump says being a famous man has its perks when it comes to women, stating, quote, they let you do it. You can do anything, unquote. The recording was obtained and published by the Washington Post. The recording is from a day when Trump made an appearance on the soap opera Days of Our Lives. Not only does he make this comment, he tells a story about hitting on an on unidentified woman unsuccessfully hours later. Trump expressed a heartfelt apology in a 90-second videotaped appearance stating, quote, anyone who knows me knows these words don't reflect who I am, unquote. Trump then went on to discuss his second debate against Hillary Clinton, which, had, which was less than 48 hours later. Haiti now mourns the death of more than 1,000 people due to Hurricane Matthew. The country now battles new deaths from cholera and must bury bodies in mass graves. The hurricane that hit Haiti had winds of 230 kilometers an hour and torrential rains. The rainwater has brought an unreal amount of flooding. The flooding water had become contaminated by cholera due to the lack of hygiene. This poses a serious risk to thousands of people in the country. The southern part of the country was hit the hardest. Landscapes were ruined, houses, um, roofs were, be, were blown off, and there were, um, trees were down everywhere. The hurricane left more than 60,000 people staying in temporary shelters. A 21-year-old woman in Brooklyn pushed her stroller carrying her one-month-old infant into an elevator when the doors opened. However, the elevator car was not there. According to authorities, both the mother and the baby fell into the shaft where it came to a stop at the 15th floor. They landed on the top of the elevated car. Someone nearby heard the mother crying out for help and rescuers were called. The accident occurred at 10.20 a.m. at 3515 Neptune Avenue. The fall killed the infant and injured the mother. The mother is currently being treated at Coney Island Hospital with family members by her side. A department spokesperson said, quote, our inspectors will remain on scene to conduct a full investigation into the tragic accident. We will be testing all of the elevators in the building to ensure they are operating safely, unquote. Donald Trump and Hil Hillary Clinton met at Washington University in St. Louis for the second presidential debate last weekend. This debate was one of their most memorable debates. Many issues were brought to light, including issues of health care, immigration, education, and foreign policy. The crowd had many times spoken out, applauding when they liked either candidates, um, when, whether either candidate had stated. Although they had started off without a handshake, Trump and Clinton ended the debate with a kind note. Shaking hands, uh, they ended an incredibly historic debate that will go down in the books. Thanks, Joanna. Stay tuned to ONN for your weekly sports update with Austin Tiedebaum.
Welcome back to Oneonta News Now. Austin, how is postseason baseball coming along? Oh, it's going. It's crazy out there. I've never seen a postseason like this in my life, but I'm enjoying yeah. every second of it. But as always, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to sports. So let's kick it off with tonight's sports with some NFL news. Quarterback for the New, <laughs> for the New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees, sets an NFL record with his 16 career 400-yard passing game after throwing for 465 yards in the New Orleans Saints 41-48 to victory over the Carolina Panthers. He and retired quarterback Peyton Manning had been tied with 15 400-yard passing games entering Week 6's games. Breeze also threw 400 passes as the Saints dropped the defending NFC champion Panthers to 1-5 this season. Breeze also reached another milestone in Sunday's game, becoming the sixth player to record 50,000 passing yards with one team. The other five are Eli Manning, Brett Favre, Dan Marino, Tom Brady, and John Elway. The MLB postseason has come into full effect with teams trying to get to the spot at the World Series. Here are the standings in the ALCS. The Cleveland Indians lead the Toronto Blue Jays by two. The reason being is that there has been no offense for the Blue Jays. They are just not hitting. The Blue Jays' offense has been a no-show through the first 18 innings of the ALCS. They have scored a grand total of one run, making it nearly impossible to avoid a 2-0 deficit, which is where the Jays find themselves against the Indians after losing 2-1 on Saturday. Blue Jays catcher Russell Martin had this to say, quote, We're a good team. Just because somebody gets ahead, I think we're down 2-0 against Texas last year, we ended up finding a way to win. We have been there before. I don't think anyone is down on themselves or herself. We got beat. We didn't destroy it or anything." Unquote. In the ALCS, the Cubs and Dodgers are tied at 1-1 in the ALCS after a dominant pitching performance by starter Clayton Kershaw and closer Kelsey Jansen got the Dodgers to, to a 1-0 win at Wrigley Field Sunday night. The only run of the game was an Adrian Gonzalez homer to lead off the second inning. The best offense in the AL was held in four, was held for 27 outs. Kershaw had a perfect game going into the fifth inning, as the Cubs only had one decent scoring opportunity all game. A two-on-two at bat in the fifth. In the fifth, the Cubs three, four, and five hitters and MVP candidate Anthony Rizzo, utility man extra extraordinary Ben Zobris and Wiz Kid shortstop Anderson Russell are combined for six to 60 so far in these playoffs. The fact is simple. The only way the Cubs are going to break the curse of 108 is if their three, four, and five hitters break the number first. Now, here's some Red Dragon news. The men's soccer team scored two goals in the first 10 minutes of play. It was more than enough for the number seven SUNY Oneonta soccer team. They gave the Ithaca College Bombers its first home loss of the season. Two different players scored for the Red Dragons in the 3-1 to one that now extends, their, now extends the team's current winning streak to 12 games. The game's first goal came in just a fifth minute when senior Dylan Johnson took advantage of keeper that came too far out to the goal. Johnson clipped the ball over the keeper's head where freshman, freshman Whitman Hernandez buried a shot for his team-leading seventh goal of the season. Five minutes later, junior Corey Santilego got up, got up a loose ball in the box and fired a shot into the far corner of the goal to give Oneonta a two-goal lead. The Red Dragons added a third goal before halftime when junior Brandon Arrigo uh, headed a cross pass from the Luke Osovic into the back of the goal in 30, 37 minutes. The men's soccer team is, seven, is 11 and 2. <laughs> the women's soccer team beat Skidmore College 2 to 1 in the closing minutes of the game with a goal from Laura Rostein. In the 84th minute, the goal was made by junior Amanda Rodney after she stole the ball from Skidmore and hit a perfect shot right past the goalkeeper's hands. The win for Oneonta ex extended its current winning streak to six games, including four straight wins. The loss for the Skidmore dropped them to a 3-6-1 and six and one overall. Oneonta will play its next-to-last home game this Saturday when they host SUNY New Paltz at the 1 p.m. Saturday Senior Day, along with being the teams for the Kerr game, Oneonta will be raising money to support breast cancer research. The women's soccer team is now 7-3. and three. And that's it for your weekly sports update on Oneonta News Now. Thanks, Austin. Join us again next time for your up-to-date news, sports, weather, and more. I'm Barbara Prempe. And I'm Joanna Weidenhammer. This is Oneonta News Now. Have a great night.